Hi guys, my name is Juliana and I'm, I'm going to discuss some problems of some things I've noticed and uh, this is the first video I'm making like this. I'm going to make some more videos about other topics but I wanted to start with something that's been um, a problem nowadays which is the lack of faith in Europe and although I'm Brazilian I don't have any problems with that yet in Brazil, not so much. We, we are lucky to live in a country where religion is uh, widely spoken about and we still are very free to talk about our beliefs and fight for them. But um, I want to discuss these problems that Europe is going through now because um, they concern the whole world and I think that if we close our eyes to the problems there, we also will have a problem here very soon. And um, I want to say that First of all, I do have some personal interest on that and some personal uh, experience with what's going on there. Uh, I gotta tell you a little about my story first and then discuss what I think about it. Um, my boyfriend is a Norwegian and I've been to Norway twice now. I spent uh, three months total there. and. During these three months, of course, I had to uh, go to church. Since I am a Catholic, I go to church every Sunday. And um, the problem there is, it, the first problem I've noticed is that it, it doesn't exist. Uh, Catholic church doesn't exist in his uh, city. It's a small city, but not that small. And there are no Catholic churches there. That was weird enough for me. And... Um, then we would go to a city nearby, or many different cities, looking for a parish. And each city apparently just has one parish. So you don't really have many options of places to go. And that's just the first problem. I believe that there are no priests, not enough priests for other parishes. So maybe that's the reason why they do not have, they do not have a parish in every city. Um, so we went there. Um, people in the parish seemed very aware of everything. They are extremely uh, respectful, and yeah, but they are not Norwegian. I guess I've seen like maybe five Norwegian people in the churches there, and in that count, I am counting with my boyfriend. Um, so it's it's a place where Norwegians don't usually go. If Norwegians go to church, they go to the Lutheran church, but they don't usually do that either. So most people there in the Catholic church are from other countries. All of them are from other countries, mostly from Asia. And uh, there are some African people too and Polish people. So if you see white people in the Catholic church, they're probably Polish. Um, and that was weird for me, but I could understand since Norway is not a Catholic country. It's considered a Protestant country, but nowadays I don't even think like that. I think they are atheists, especially now that the Church of Norway is no longer connected to the government. So I, I consider them an atheist country, since most Norwegians not even believe in God anymore. And I've noticed this crisis in the Catholic Church there. I've noticed that priests don't know exactly how to deal with someone who wants to convert. And this is the reason why I'm making this video. Um, the, the priests are not aware of what to do if someone suddenly comes there and says, I want to be a Catholic now. And we are going through that problem. Um, the steps here in Brazil are quite simple if you want to become a Catholic. Depending on the church you were baptized on, you don't have to be baptized again. So you just go there and you show them that you were baptized in this church. And then you're going to take this course, which is a course to learn about the uh, catechism. And yeah, so you take this course. And it's a very short course. It doesn't last a year. It's very short, some months, maybe six months or something like that, eight months. And, uh, and then you get confirmed. If you are not baptized, then you get baptized and confirmed. And 
of course, you can take communion after you're baptized. And uh, I was a teacher in this course. I had many students um, with different situations. Some of them were not baptized at all. Some of them were baptized in different churches. Some of them uh, were baptized in the Catholic Church but didn't have confirmation yet, and they were grown-ups. So many different cases. In all of them, basically, you needed to be baptized first, and then you could um, you could get confirmed and take communion too. They had this special day to do all that. The problem that we saw in Norway was that there is no opportunity of taking the course because they offer the courses for the children. And since my boyfriend is not a child, he doesn't want to take the course with children. The language will be different. He's going to learn everything he already knows. And I have, I have been teaching him. He's read uh, a lot about the church and been studying a lot since he decided he wanted to be a Catholic. And uh, so he knows everything. He knows that it's Jesus in the Eucharist. He knows everything. But he's still not allowed to take communion. And we really don't know what to do. So um, I want to discuss some problems that Norway is going through now. And it's, it's an alert to all the Catholics, especially the Catholics in Europe, that you got to be more open, you got to open the doors of your church to welcome people. Um, Norway was considered a Protestant country, and um, the Lutheran Church is very strong there. Um, but nowadays, a lot of people is leaving the, the, the Lutheran Church because they are um, they don't agree anymore. The church is opening their doors to a lot of stuff. Um, they are becoming very uh, relativist about the everything that the world wants to put nowadays, like um, gay marriage, for instance. They they are becoming like they are opening the doors to that and saying that it is allowed, and they have um, yeah they have different. Uh, perspectives nowadays and the most conservative people they do not agree anymore so there is an increasing number of people who were protestants and who now want to become catholics and i don't think that the priests are prepared for that you know they are very they are used to having asians maybe latin people africans but they don't know how to deal with uh, people who were protestants and do not want to be anymore and uh, this thing uh, has been making people want to become Catholic. Um, however, not everybody wants to become a Catholic. Many people become atheists. And they just leave the church. They stop believing in God. Most young people there do not believe in God anymore. And that's not just a problem in Norway. That's a problem in Europe. Any country you go to now, you're going to see that the young people are not so much into church anymore. And... Um, this has been spreading so much, and we got to do something about it because it, it's not supposed to be like that. You know, Europe was the responsible for us here in Brazil having the Catholic Church, and nowadays I feel like we have the obligation to go back and give them back what they gave us and really help those souls. We got to worry more about the souls, and I think that people are not so worried about that. The people who are Catholic there and who have their Catholic Church and their closed groups, they are just worried about keeping that going, and not worrying so much about the souls, but worrying about keeping it going, and um, my boyfriend said something that really made me think, he said that he has always felt that the Catholic Church was a closed group for a select group of people, and that not everybody was welcome there, and I told him that was not like that, that was an absurd, because here in Brazil it's not like that. But when I went there, I felt the same. I felt that they were not welcoming new people. They didn't care for new people there. They were not uh, concerned about the souls and their salvation. They were just concerned about keep it going the way it is. And it's not working the way it is. Um, so atheism has grown too in whole Europe. With that, we see what's going on now, which is the Muslims who are taken over through all Europe too. And they have a lot of room to do everything they want. There is no more um, 
resistance from people. It's just normal. Let's welcome these people. It's okay if you want to welcome these people, but they gotta live by the rules of your society. If someone comes to my house, they gotta live by the rules of my house. But they go to these countries and they pretty much change the way they live. And you gotta adapt to them and they do not adapt to you. And that's a problem. And it has become uh, a problem too in, in Norway. Not so big as in other countries like uh, France or Belgium or other countries more south, but it still is a problem and it's growing. And I don't think that's gonna take a long time until most of the country is Muslim people. And um, I don't I, I don't see that as a problem if you want to become a Muslim. But the problem is where are the Christians? A lot of people say they're Christians, but they're not real Christians. They're not fighting for it. They're not talking about Jesus. They're not spreading the word. They're not spreading the gospel. We cannot be silent when we see these things happening. We got to do something about it. We got to talk about it. We got to increase the awareness of people that the Church of Christ is dying in Europe. We cannot allow that to happen. We know that the that hell is not going to win over the Church because it is something that Jesus himself said that wouldn't happen. But we don't want to make it uh, we don't want to, to speed up the return of Jesus to earth. We gotta do something about it. We cannot be just crossing our arms and saying, no, we, I can't do anything about it. We gotta do something. And um, so this video is an alert to people uh, that we need more missions in Europe. We need more people who are willing to talk about Jesus, who are willing to spread the word, to go after those people who left the church, who are willing to go after those people who are getting lost because their Protestant churches are not fulfilling anymore. We gotta be with our arms wide open for these people and welcoming them and tell, telling them that this is their house too. The Catholic Church is the home of every Christian in the world and it should be like that. It's important that all the priests and bishops and everyone in the world and even you who just go to church and sit there. It, it's important that all of us are aware that this is the house of everyone. And you cannot close the doors for anyone who says that they want to be a Catholic. Because Catholic means universal and this is the universal church. So let's just use this as uh, an alert. It's something that's been bothering me for a while. It's something that I've thought about and, you know, gotta and I've been planning what I have to do still don't know it's a it's a hard job it's something hard to do by myself I know I can't but uh, we all gotta pray to God to help us and give us strength and I know that he will because he doesn't want his church to die and it is in our hands now so this is it thank you for listening to me until now and um, if you want me to talk about any other topics you can suggest if you want me to explain something or to discuss some problems, I'm, I'm open to opinions. And um, yeah, I'm going to put a video here every week. So uh, discussing things or teaching stuff or, you know, the general problems and doubts that people have according to uh, regarding uh, the Catholic Church. So yeah, so this is it. I, I hope you have enjoy the video but most of all I hope you think about it and start changing this attitude of closing doors to people and start welcoming everyone to the church of God. <laughs>